Now, depth masks are powerful tools that allow you to add dimensionality to your images and on one makes it really, really easy for us to do it. Now, to get started, you do have to have on one photo raw 2025. So if you're on an earlier version, this video is not going to help you. But if you want to pick up on one photo raw 2025, consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20. It'll save you some money at checkout. I make a small commission at no extra cost to you, and you get the latest version of On One Photo Raw 2025. Now, if you're new to depth masks and you just don't know what they are, don't worry. I'm going to show you from the ground up exactly how to use these powerful tools. Okay, so what in the world is a depth mask? I've said it so many times in this video. Let's go ahead and jump into On One and take a look. So here we are inside of On One. If I hit the letter O, I'm showing you an overlay on the image. Now, this is the depth mask I've already added to the image. Let me go ahead and bring this to its default values, which are about here. And what we're seeing is the items that are closest to the camera or the lens in the image are going to be selected. And as it fades away or goes deeper into the image, you're going to see less of the image or items in the image are being selected. Essentially, this is a tapered approach to the things that we're seeing in three dimensional space. Now, this is the reason why depth masks are so powerful is because a two dimensional image, which is what we're looking at on the computer and whenever you print a photo, uh, doesn't always represent what the location or the subject look like in the lighting. So this is why depth masks are very, very powerful. What you'll do is you'll add an adjustment and make note that you can add any adjustment. The flow or the process is going to be the same. And what we'll do is right click on the mask icon and we'll come down to this item that says create depth mask. When you click there, it's going to render your image or look at your image, and then it's going to generate this depth mask. Now, it looks like it just made some portions of the image darker, which is what it did. But if I hit the letter O, you can see that I now have this overlay. If you really want to be a power user as far as creating these depth masks, you can use a keyboard shortcut. Now, I'll show you what my keyboard shortcut is. I'll come up to edit and then keyboard shortcuts. And in the search, I'll type in depth. Now, if this is your first time coming to the keyboard shortcut, then you probably don't have anything inside of this little box here. I have changed mine to option shift and D. This allows me to create a depth mask using keyboard shortcuts. So I don't have to do the clicking game, but there's nothing wrong with doing the right clicks and getting to that option. So let's go over how to modify the masking properties for your depth mask. My recommendation is that you set your mask to grayscale. You can do that by coming down to the very bottom here, clicking the drop down arrow, and then selecting grayscale from the pop-up menu. I'm gonna hit the letter O, so that way we can see this grayscale mask. And what you'll do next is come over to the masking properties. Now, if you're using a floating window, this is all gonna work the same. I just happen to have mine in the right pane. And when I hover over my masking properties, I get this uh, option of levels. Now, for those of us who have been using on one for a very long time, we probably have not even touched this particular lever. If I pull this to the left, you'll see that things start to get more white that means I'm including more things inside of the mask. If I pull it to the right, that means I'm taking things away from the mask. That's what the center node does. Now, if I were to grab this uh, far right node and pull it to the left, you'll see that it's starting to make the areas that are the closest to the camera a little bit more uh, drastic of a change. And we'll see this in real time here shortly. I just kind of want to show you what's happening on the mask. But if I pull this out, you see how it gets a little bit more gray. And as I pull this more into the middle, then it gets a little bit more white, which means that it's applying more of the effect into that area. And then obviously this will do the reverse of that. So if I pull this up, you can see that I'm adding more 
or taking away things from the mask. So if you really want to fine tune this and only get it into the front area, which this isn't very much of a depth mask anymore, but you know, let's say that that's what I want it to do. Let me hit the letter O and you can see that I have just darkened down this pole that's in the foreground here. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that the foreground is just getting darker and darker. The way that I would recommend working with this particular mask is first starting in grayscale. So let's just go ahead and reset this all together. And then what I want to do is like creatively for me in this image, your image will be different is I want to pull the, uh, I want to darken the foreground element, which is this front pole. So what I'm going to do is just pull this back over to the right here and then maybe pull in just a little bit. Now, once I get to a relatively good spot on the grayscale option, what I'm going to do is hit the letter O and this allows me to view what I'm doing in real time. So that way I can see if I like what's happening. And this is a game of subtle adjustments. All right. You use the grayscale, or at least I recommend using the grayscale to get the general idea of what you want the mask to look like. And then you come over into uh, the live image here and you make very subtle adjustments. So I would probably settle for something like this. And now once I have the mask completed, I can go ahead and make any adjustments that I really want it to for this particular image. So this probably has you wondering, all right, Chris, what effects inside of on one should I consider using the depth mask on? Well, I'm going to pop a few of them up here on the screen and in no particular order, I'll say that you probably want to use this on the lens blur filter, the curves adjustment filter, the HDR look filter, the dynamic contrast filter, sunshine filter, maybe even the glow filter. I mean, honestly, you can use it on any of the filters, but sometimes to really create that dimensionality, those are the filters that I think will help. What we're going to do is look at a few of these filters and how I would recommend using it because I think that there's some nuances to each of those filters and applying a depth mask in your image. So let's go ahead and jump back into on one. Our first example is using the HDR look. Now I overbaked this image intentionally just to show that using a depth mask can really help with some subtle adjustments to your image. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my keyboard shortcut to apply the depth mask to this image and we'll see what happens. So right away, the image looks just a little bit different. All right. Now, if I were to turn this off and turn it back on, you can see what's actually happening to the image here. It's very, very subtle. Now that's with using the default depth mask. If I hit the letter O using my technique of looking at it in grayscale to figure out where I want this to go, I know that I want to apply more of this effect into this area. So what I'm going to do is come up here to my masking options and I'm just going to pull this to the left. That's going to apply it more into this area. Now, again, once I get the mask roughly where I want it to be, I'm going to hit the letter O, take a look at the image overall, and I will come back to my masking options and I'll pull this to the left until I get it to a point where I am the most satisfied. Now, again, this is more of the subtle approach to really modifying the image and creating, again, that dimensionality in the photo. So if I were to turn off the HDR effect and turn it back on, you can see exactly what it's doing to the image, like when it's a drastic change like this. But that fade that was gradually happening right in here. It's not one of those things that probably is going to come through on YouTube, but I promise you when you do this on your own images, you'll see exactly how using this as a subtle approach to editing your images can really be impactful and helpful. So one of the other filters that you may consider using a depth mask on is a lens blur. So I'm actually going to walk you through this process as we build it up on the image. 
I'm going to go ahead and click add filter, select lens blur. And again, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to create the depth mask. And instantly we start to see something a little bit different here. If I hit the letter O, you can see it just gives me the exact same depth mask. Now, one of the things that I like to do with my lens blurs is try to create more of an analog look with that. The actual depth mask itself probably isn't going to help me in the grayscale. So this one, I want to look at the live image. And this is one of the ways that I would recommend using it on your own photos and really only using the grayscale to verify that you are targeting the right areas because it could be a little hard to see. OK, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this to the right, because I actually want to take this away from the fine edges that are back here in the depth. Like I want this to be blurred out. I think that that's perfectly fine, but I want the sign here to have a little bit more dimensionality to it and uh, crispness or clarity to it. So I don't want that effect applying there as much. So I'm just going to pull this over to the right just like so and now i'm just going to increase the blur amount we can see that that's starting to really uh, make the image a little grainy there so let's hit the letter o see how much of that is impacting which it's not actually impacting it that much so let's just pull this back and then we will come over here to the blooming and I think that that's working quite well. I may actually pull back on the opacity just a bit so it's not like over the top, but you can see that it's a very, very subtle adjustment. Again, this is one of those subtle moves to making the depth in an image a little bit more uh, dynamic overall. So if I were to turn off the lens blur, we can see that I just lose some of that sharpness around the edge there. And that to me uh, speaks of vintage glass and, you know, analog imagery. So it's not so crisp, but this may be a little too, too much. So we'll just pull back the opacity until we get to a point where I think it, it really looks well again. This is one of those things you want to try on your own images to make sure that it's working well for you uh, because it is a subtle adjustment. So the next adjustment that I would recommend using the depth mask on is the tone enhancer. Now, I know this isn't one that I talked about earlier, but when we start talking about light in the image, the depth mask is a really, really cool tool that you can use on that. So I'm going to go ahead and create the depth mask here using my keyboard shortcut, of course because that's just how I like to work. Now, what this is doing is it's actually applying it in the incorrect locations that I want to apply this tone enhancer adjustment. So what I'm going to do is just right click on the mask icon here and click the invert mask option. And now I am getting the opposite effect where the foreground isn't actually being darkened. It's the background that's getting the darkening effect. So if I hit the letter O, you can see how that's working. Let me just turn this mask off and turn it back on. You can see it's just darkening down everything. These masks work all the same, just like any other mask does inside of On One Photo Raw. So I can take a brush by hitting the B key, coming over here and grabbing the brush tool, whatever you want to do. And I have a low opacity at the current moment for this brush. And what I'm going to do is just paint over this sign. And what that's going to do is block out some of that uh, negative exposure adjustment that I just applied to the rest of the background here. And it's a very subtle subtle adjustment. You know, the, the whole idea of using depth mask, sometimes you can be a little bit more bold with your approach and other times it helps to be subtle, but let me just go ahead and pull up on the opacity here. Let's pull it up and then I'll just paint over this. So that way we can see this build up a little bit more, but you can see what I'm doing here and you could do this with any of the mass inside of on one. 
so this isn't anything brand new but you can see now this sign is just a little bit brighter than everything else behind it really drawing the eye of the viewer into this area of the image so not only am i working with a frame sort of inside of the frame but i'm also working with the light and that's you know getting into techniques of how do you uh, keep the eye in the image where you want the viewer to look so let me go ahead and turn this off and turn it back on and you can just see that everything around the sign gets a little bit darker in a more uniform approach as opposed to me just trying to put this all over the image and then cutting out around the sign uh, i'm really bringing in the tonal values as the light would have fallen off in real life as i'm looking at it so depth masks are a really unique tool i would love to hear how you're using them in your own workflows in the comment section below if you want to learn more about All On Photo Raw and how you can use it in your specific workflow, consider signing up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. The link for that is in the description box below. And until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.